welcome back everyone so today we are going to be creating a dented or a cracked metal surface and this is going to be a completely procedural method so let's dive into it so i'm going to go into my poly modeling and i'll start with a nice backdrop just a simple nice plane with a little bit of curve to give a nice backdrop look and i'm going to extrude this bring this up select this edge and separate bevel you can also select bevel from up here and I'm going to just bring this up and scale this up. Alright, so this is our backdrop. I'm going to take a simple sphere. This will be our material representation. I'm going to make the radius to 2. And I'm not going to get too much uh, into the whole modeling phase. I think everybody knows how to create a backdrop. And I'm going to quickly take a simple camera. I'm going to bring this back. And let's get into our camera. I'm going to change the resolution to 1K. Alright, let's turn on our film gate to see what we are doing. And uh, I think this looks good. I'm going to lock my camera here. Okay, so this looks good. And for the lighting purpose, I've already taken one simple HDR. You can find multiple HDRs on Google for free. Uh, I don't want to waste too much time on that. Alright, I'm going to create a new material for the backdrop. I'm going to call this a simple BG. And I'm going to make it pretty rough. And I'm going to add some diffuse roughness as well. I'm going to add a new material for this. And uh, let's call this cracked. And let's take a simple preset, maybe a brushed metal to start off with. Alright, so if I show you my scene now, let's render this. So this is what my scene looks like right now. Now there's one thing that you should know before getting into this and that is this will not work with GPU. I don't know why some certain nodes does not work with GPU that well. So because GPU is still under development, I guess so. Uh, but this is not that heavy for the CPU process as well. I'm just going to lower this down. Alright. So this is our default material with the brushed metal preset and that's it. So let's get into how to create those denting and so on. So I'm going to go to my hypershade and I'm going to right click on my material and let's go to graph network. Alright, so from here, let's select this. This is what my material looks like. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to Arnold and take a simple AI noise. This is my AI noise. And then we have some parameters for the AI noise. The first thing is the octaves and this is basically your overall quality of the noise. So I'm going to increase the octaves to 8, which is the maximum value. And then you have distortion to add some distortion to the noise. Before adding some distortion, I'm just going to increase the amplitude here to maybe something like a bit more uh, heavy or a bit more strength, which has more strength. So as you can see, we have much greater value of black and white now. Then from here, we can add a bit more distortion. Distortion totally depends on how much distortion you want. I'm going to keep it to maybe around somewhere around here. And then you have lacunarity and if you lower this you'll see you'll have a smooth noise and if you increase this you have much greater details around the edges. So I'm going to keep maybe this to somewhere about here. I think this looks pretty nice. And if you'll notice we have a pretty big noise going on. So I'm going to actually small noise going on for the overall material. So I'm going to lower this down. Actually let's keep it like this for now. Alright so if we attach this to the base color we have something like this. So you can see the overall mapping on our shader ball here. So how do we create those dents? Now it's really simple to do. All we have to do is take a simple bump node. Now we have already, I've already covered a video regarding the bump node, I think. And uh, that is how you can use a displacement map and a bump map to create some fake displacement. So I'm going to, before attaching this to the bump, map, I need something to control my noise and that will be my color correct node. So I'm going to take a color correct and from this, we don't actually mess, uh, we have to mess around a lot with the noise. We can simply use our color correct to increase or decrease the gamma. Sometimes you have to give a simple refresh to the IPR to see the overall changes. Alright, so I'm going to make this a bit more contrasting, something maybe like this. This looks pretty good. And uh, yeah, something like this. Alright, so I'm going to attach this now to my bump node, to the bump map. And as you can see already, you can see the whole uh, overall bumping going on, the fake displacement. And from here, I'm going to attach this to the normal camera. Oh, and from here, you can actually, let's go into our material. And from here, you can start to see some nice 
curves and pattern going on around here which looks pretty interesting all right so let's give a little bit more depth to this because this is not exactly looking that great i mean you can still see the overall details here but it's not that good looking so how do we fix that what we are going to do is we are going to drive the same thing with a normal map so we are going to create a normal map using the same noise and instead of using the color correct node into the input of the normal we are going to use our noise directly as a normal map because we don't want to use the strengthened version of our noise we want a default noise going on i'm going to attach this uh, normal map open this up and attach this to the bump height and there we go and we'll have a much better result going on and now if you look at this yes i'm going to up my res a bit um let's go for something like maybe a 2k and uh, yeah now you can see much better look and i think i'm gonna ink let's remove these unnecessary samples and let's make it four and three and three and that looks good and i think we need something more for our hdr a bit more bright so we can see 0.9 will be great i think let's turn this on all right so here now you have a perfectly nice procedural dense going on around your surface it looks really nice neat and we are using a very low amount of subdivision on our sphere it's not even subdivided it's just a default sphere and you can see a lot of displacement going in a lot of cracks so this is what we are doing is basically using normal map and bump map to create those fake displacements to create those fake cracks and you can use it on pretty much anything so let's take a different object maybe to use it so this is a completely procedural method now if you don't like something and if you want to change it you can simply go back and change it and i think i'm going to make this like two or like something like this and i'm going to apply the same material to this cube and let's turn this on and now you'll see it perfectly maps now let's say if you are not happy with the overall uh, scaling of the noise if you want maybe a bit more smaller or let's say you want a bigger cracks what you can do is go to geometry go into the bump map and from here you can get into the bump map again and here you'll find noise and let's turn this on and i'm going to decrease the overall size here scale here of the overall noise x y and z and i'm going to hit enter so now you'll notice that we have much bigger noise pattern going on let's say if you want a bit more smaller cracks so i'm gonna hit two two and two for the overall scale value and now you have much smaller cracks going on so you can play around a lot with this you can try to create a matte or maybe a glossy object totally depends on you you can go back to your material and maybe add a bit more code into this if you like some maybe roughness and uh, i'm not gonna add a transmission i think i'm gonna keep the metalness to maybe 0.9 and let's keep the color to something like a bit gray right, something like this maybe let's bring this down and uh, let's increase some specular into this and so there you go so now this looks pretty good i think the quote amount is a bit too much i'm gonna reduce this maybe a point one all right so there you go now you can use uh, maybe a different color or maybe a plastic shader as well. You can use this on different presets as well. If you don't have enough time to create a certain type of, certain type of material, you can use it on diamond, car paint, metallic and so on. You can even use sheen if you want. So just have fun with it. And let me just take something like this. And this looks pretty bad actually. Alright, so this was fun. So have fun with this material. Try to create something of your own and try to add a bit more detail into this. I just played around with one noise and I really thought I had to share this idea. So play around with this, have fun and show me what you come up with. Alright, that's it for this one and I'll see you in the next video.